Hello fellow CNC nuts and welcome. A few weeks ago I got an email from David. He said something I've never mastered is the ability to start or from a line of G code somewhere into a job. Now occasionally you need to do this. You might break a cutter while doing your machining. You don't want to start back from the beginning once you've replaced your cutter. You want to replace the cutter, re-zero it to the table, and start from where you left off. Other reasons to stop are you need to reposition a clamp because it's now in the way. It might be time to go in for tea. It might be midnight. The neighbours are massing at the workshop door with clubs and pitchforks. So there's all sorts of reasons why you might want to stop. So David, here's how to do it. To restart your machine, you must first know how to stop it. And Mac 3 gives us three ways of stopping it. We have the emergency stop button. And it shows up on our desktop as a reset button. The next is the feed hold button. And thirdly, we have the stop button. Now each of these behave differently. First option, the emergency stop button. It's wired directly into the controller. When you press it, it disables the drives and if you have a relay which turns on and off your router, will also turn the router off. It's my least favourite method of stopping the machine, but don't hesitate to use it. It's there for a reason, it's important you have one, and if it stops the machine, that's good. But only use it in an emergency. Now the second option, and my favourite, is the feed hold button. It's basically a pause button. Now the first thing you'll notice about it is when you push the button, the machine won't stop. Because it's been sending instructions to my smooth stepper, it will continue running those instructions. The PC will simply stop sending any more. Once the buffer is empty, the machine will come to a stop. You'll find that the spindle will not turn off, so simply turn it off at the router. Now you can go and do whatever it is you want. You might want to go and have a cup of tea. You might need to move a clamp that's in the way or simply check up on something. Once you're happy and are ready to restart, simply turn the router back on and push the cycle start button. The machine will keep running from where it left off. Now the stop button. Pressing that will immediately bring the machine to a stop. It will also raise the cutter to a safe height and if you have a relay that controls the spindle, will turn it off. Once it's done, you can then also jog the machine anywhere you like, change a cutter, do whatever it is you need to do, and you will not lose position. So it is a really good function, but there's one little fish hook with it. Pushing the stop button does not allow the buffer in the likes of a smooth stepper to empty. That means the commands between when you stopped and where it was in the buffer will be lost. So if you're using a motion controller, this could cause you problems. I don't know how it reacts when using it on a parallel port of the laptop. So the correct way to use the stop button is to push the feed hold so that the machine can empty the buffer, come to a gentle stop, then you push the stop button, which will then raise the cutter out of your cut and switch off the spindle. And now a word of warning guys, if you push the stop button for whatever reason, whether you use the feed hold first or not, do not push the cycle start button to recommence your cut. And there's a very good reason for that. First, it will not restart the spindle, you've got to do that manually. There's no instruction in the G-code for it to do that. Secondly, if you move the cutter out of the way to get a good look at whatever it is you've stopped it for, or to change a cutter and re-zeroed it, the cutter will now take the most direct route from where it's sitting to where it wants to be, and it will cut anything that gets in its way. 
there's a proper way of restarting these, which leads on nicely to David's question. So I'm machining away and I need to stop and check some settings. I'm going to push the feed hold button and when the machine stops moving, I'll push the stop button. If my spindle was automated, it would automatically stop running. I can now move the router out of the way and attend to whatever it is that I need to do. So I've checked everything I wanted to and I'm now ready to restart my cut. You can see here I was working on line 1986 when I pushed the stop button. Up here is the actual line of code and over here is a diagram showing the part that was actually being cut at the time. Now personally I prefer to start a few lines before where it actually stopped. So I'm just going to push the up arrow here and just take it back a few lines. As I click you can see the path being cut changes. So I'll start cutting from here. I now need to execute a run from here command. This has Mac 3 go through and recalculate everything so that it knows exactly where it's up to for the start. I can now click cycle start. It brings up this screen saying it's going to prepare the position. It's going to take it to these X and Y coordinates. The Z cutter height will be at minus 4.5 millimeters and it will use a safe Z of 30 millimeters while it's traveling to that location. If I had an automated spindle, I would click Start Spindle. That will automatically start that for me, ready to start the cut. I can now push the OK button and the machine will move into position. I can now press the cycle start and it will start cutting. Now that we've seen how to restart the machine, let's look at navigating around this box. There are two ways of doing it. The easiest is with the mouse. Simply click and drag on this here to bring it to where you want to be. Get it reasonably close and then you can click either side of it to move it 15 lines of g-code at a time. I want to go to line 1980, so there we go, I'm only three away from it now. Using these arrows, I can move a single line of G-code. What I need to do now is click Run from here and push the cycle start. Now the other way of doing it is to use the arrow keys on the keyboard. The problem is you need to remember to click on this box before doing it because if you simply push the arrow keys you'll see here that what happens is the machine jogs. So I'm going to click in the box here and you'll notice the color changes. Now I can use those arrow keys to navigate up or down as necessary. Simply holding my finger on the key will scroll through the lines of g-code. Pushing it one at a time will take us one line at a time. Once I get to the line I want to run from, just sit, run from here and we're ready to go. Another way of doing it is if you happen to know exactly which line number you want to go to, in this case 1980, you can type it in. You have to hit the enter key after typing it in. Click run from here and you're ready to go. Now if you don't hit that enter key here is what will happen. I'll enter 1980 and click run from here. Now it goes through the motions of calculating but at the end of the day it returns to the line it was on before you entered it, in this case line 0. So when you enter the number always remember to hit the enter key. You're now ready to start. 
Now it's quite probable that you don't actually have the line of G code that you want to start from. Maybe you broke a cutter, maybe you had to reposition something on the table. Maybe you lost your zero position, had to reset it up, repositioned everything. You're ready to go, but now you've got to figure out where you're up to. We can do that by simply scrolling through here. As you go, the areas that are currently being tool, uh, the toolpath is referring to are lighting up on our drawing here. And we can simply go backwards and forwards until it lights up the area we're interested in. You can see we're going around the inner toolpath here of the octagon and now we're coming up here to the profile cut. This would be a safe starting point because I've already cut at least one round here. So all I have to do is go run from here and we're ready to go. Hit the cycle start and go OK. Well I hope you found that useful and we'll be able to use the Mac 3 stop and start functionality a little bit better. You'll note I didn't cover how to recover your X and Y location after the likes of a power cut or similar natural disaster. That's a subject for an entirely separate video. All that remains for me to do now is to thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll catch you guys later. Cheers.